Hi and welcome to this uh, second basic video of how to use uh, a MOSFET as a switch uh, at logic levels. In the previous video uh, on the screen on the top right or in the description I showed you how to use the uh, N channel 2N7000 or BS170 as a, a switch uh, to control a separate voltage and current. Um, the reason, of course, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, is that you know your microprocessor can put logic level outputs, but you know constrained by a, a limit on voltage. Uh, the two N seven thousand can handle sixty volts, I think, and each pin can only handle forty volts. The uh, sorry, forty milliamps, whereas the two N seven thousand can handle I think about two hundred milliamps. And there are other MOSFETs out there that can take the voltage up. Um, the one I'm using in my uh, BMS uh, modeling handles 50 amps, so you know, choose your weapons carefully. But this is a, a basic guide on how to use a P channel uh, MOSFET. Now, the corollary to the 2N7000, uh, and 2N7000 sometimes because of the name BS170, is the BS250. I don't have a BS250, but I do have a ZVP3306 uh, MOSFET. Here it is. Uh, P-channel MOSFET and uh, what I'll do is I'll show you how to configure this uh, for use with a, a microcontroller, any microcontroller, as long as you can put a logic level output out like 3.3 or 5 volts on a pin um, then you can switch this thing uh, on and off. So um, the first things first, uh, let's hop over to the um, uh, sketch pad and let's um, put together a simple sketch. Um, Right, set up. All I want to do is let the uh, processor know I'm using a, a pin uh, as an output pin. This is the, uh, I, th I think it's, it's pin mode in Arduino speak. Uh, it's uh, data direction register in AVR speak. Pin mode. I'll use pin 1, which is actually physical pin 5, and we'll label that as output so it knows exactly which way to expect to treat that pin. Um, then down here, all we'll do is we'll uh, um, sorry print. Where's that coming from? Digital write, digital write. Uh, we'll take the pin high, and then we'll just delay for a second. And the reason the delay is I'm going to be lighting an LED to show you that the switch is indeed working. So there we go, delay 1000. We'll just duplicate those lines and change the digital right to low. And there we have a toggle. Um, quick check on that. Looks all right. Semicolons in place, right. We'll upload that. Over here, I've got, um, uh, 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 what is it, a nano, a nano hooked up as an ISP. If you want to see how this is done, there's a video in the description and there's one on the top right hand side of the screen showing you how to wire this thing up and get a serial monitor working with the AT Tiny 85. But just, just use your, uh, uh, your Arduino as it is without using an AT Tiny 85 if you want to. So I don't want to save that, so we'll just um, compile it and upload it. And uploading, there it goes. Excellent. Okay, so now uh, we can get rid of all this junk now. Let's pull these out that's uh, yep well we don't need the power on that either so this is uh, this is the board uh, with the AT tiny uh, in it and what we have is uh, this um, P channel MOSFET and um, what we're gonna have to do is connect uh, this up in such a way as to take the drain and feed it through a um, LED uh, with of course a current limiting resistor and show you that this is indeed working. So what we'll have is we'll have this going through to negative this LED and we'll strap it to a, a line where we'll connect the drain of the um, MOSFET. So I'll, I'll plug the drain of the MOSFET, this is the bit that gets switched on uh, through to here and this is the current limiting resistor in place to show that the uh, switch is working through illuminating the LED without blowing it. Okay, um, now uh, drain, gate in the middle and source. So let's um, 
let's get the source. The source on the P channel, of course, is uh, positive. And the drain is also positive. So we'll take, I don't have another red wire. Give me a red wire. I don't have a red wire. Okay, let's, uh, let's use a black wire. Drain all the way through to here. Right, so just to recap, it's on the screen for you. Um, we, we, we now have pin one up here on the top left. We don't have any power to the board just yet, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll put the toggle pin in, physical pin five, physical pin six, I beg your pardon, into the center pin, which is the gate. And now, if we hook up some power to this, um, let's do that now. I'm not sure I've got here, I think it's five volts. That's no, 3.3 volts, okay. So we hook up some power to this, we should have a flashing How about uh, putting the power on? Yeah? There we go, a flashing LED. And uh, just as a wrap up, I'd remind you that I, I think this thing can handle, I don't know, 170, 200 milliamps. So it can handle lots and lots of volts. I think it's about 40 or 50 volts. Uh, if, if 200 milliamps isn't good enough for you, you want something higher, then, you know, I used a beefy one on my BMS of 50 amps. Just choose your weapon carefully, but make sure if you go for a high current switching um, um, MOSFET that you can trigger the gate at logic level voltages, so 3.35 volts. Uh, anything higher, then you're going to be struggling to uh, get that triggered. And make sure if you do go to higher currents that you don't uh, have to mess around with the gate. Oscillations, ring, um, capacitance and stuff at that level starts to play uh, a much more important role. But for the purposes of you know, maybe an amp or so being switched or a few amps being switched from a, a circuit board such as this with a microcontroller, you hard to do uh, better than a, a P or N channel logic level MOSFET. Hope that's been useful. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you found it useful. All the best. Bye bye.